Joining me on The Filmmakers are Atanajwat's director, Zacharias Kanuk, and its star, Natar Ungalak. Welcome, both of you. Thank you for being here. The legacy of this movie, unlike a lot of movies, this the legacy just keeps growing and growing and growing, I feel. It's been pretty extraordinary. People have learned from it. People regard it as one of the best, if not the best, Canadian film of all time, which is pretty amazing. Um, how does that feel to you? I don't know. It hasn't settled into me yet, but mm. uh, that's our goal. I mean, that's the goal we're trying to achieve. All of, us, all of us filmmakers, we're no different, we're the same. Well, that's probably our one of the best story in our region, mm -hmm. which we put it on the film. Mm -hmm. and it makes me very proud that we can pass the, our story from through tongue, then through films, mm -hmm. which is very good for us to be involved. Tell me a little bit about the funding. Were there hurdles? Did you have to convince people that this was a valid story? 20 years ago, um, it was almost impossible to make a film if you're uh, Aboriginal. And that's what we, we ran into. Uh, we never knew that this exists, that if you had a bright idea, anybody could propose for funding, get funding, and do it. In that time, it was not like that, uh, f probably for a long time. And, and we changed that. They also want our actors to speak English. And I had a good argument with that because <laughs> I've seen kung fu movies. <laughs> and I thought, hey, that's what it's going to look like, mm -hmm. a kung fu movie, and I didn't want that. How did you two find each other? How did you find your Atanajwat? Um, it was accident. <laughs> um, I know, Natar and I, we grew up together. We went to school together. Uh, we carved madly soapstone to make money when we were teenagers. Uh, it was, uh, at that time, Atanab Dredd was going to be played by Charlie, who is the husband of uh, Sylvia, mm -hmm. who played Atud. And we were doing something with the school, our star didn't appear. I remember that well. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and were you scheduled to play a different role in the film? Yes. Actually, okay. I was going to play the older brother of Atanav Dred. So did you have that moment that is in every movie where the, the understudy says, I can play the part, I know all the lines, if the star doesn't show up? I well, let me talk about this. He didn't show up <laughs> in front of kids. It's, we're setting standards. Right. We're setting role models. And he didn't show up. And, uh, my head was shaking. He didn't have to say anything. And he, he had to appear on mm -hmm. the stage. Natan, go put the costume on. Wow. Yeah, that's how he came. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like you were ready for the challenge. He didn't say anything. He, he just pointed. pointed at me and I knew that right away. I have to play that. And I said, yes, I can play that role. There's a famous scene, of course, where you have to run naked yeah. over the snow, barefoot. Talk to me about that scene. Well, in my mind, nobody wanted to get that raw, <laughs> naked, in front of camera. Right. And I said to myself, if I have a chance, I'll play that, that role. Mm. I think that's the point that I pitch in perfectly to be in, as an Atanav the mm -hmm. last runner. Mm -hmm. But well, you knew it was coming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was already there, so... Right. So when you signed on, you were like, okay, that scene will happen. That's yeah. going to come. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So how do you prepare yourself? Well, everything has to be prepared from scratch. Uh, behind the scene, I remember I was inside the tent, naked, trying to be warm, and little stove was on. And at the same time, before the break, we I was making a, a coffee that built up and... The steam went up and all of a sudden it spilled into my back and I had a little souvenir for that. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what about your feet? Nothing cut. Yeah. But the only part that I had a little bit of cut was on my knee because I had to fall down and that was pretty interesting, challenging for me to be involved. And we planned it. We, you know, we takes and takes. 
it went so good. This film won the camera door in Cannes. It was the first Canadian film to do that. What was that like? It was, uh, I thought it was normal. I, mean, <laughs> I thought every Canadian came to Cannes and won sometimes. <laughs> and then just part of their flow. Wow. That's what I thought. And, and what was that experience like for you? I had a good experience call from SAC from Cannes to Iglutic. I was in the office and he ended up calling me, we won. And I said, what are we trying to win? And all of a sudden, <laughs> SAC said, we won the film in Cannes. Oh, okay. I wasn't really that focused for trying to win and all that. And huh. he made it happen. It feels like there must be something a sort of before this film and after this film. Kids today that you're teaching grow up thinking this is normal. Of course, there's a great, big, huge, award-winning film about our culture. W what is that like for the two of you? Um, for me, it's great because um, when I came to Iglulik in the 60s, I went to our little community hall where they watch movies, cowboys and Indians, and I thought it was God sent. Never knew there were cameras here and there, and mm -hmm. so many people worked behind the camera. I mean, didn't even know that. And are young filmmakers today? Are they savvy? Do they watch YouTube and they figure it out? Are they? Do they? Are they teaching you stuff? Do you know uh, stuff um, you're passing on to them? Everybody has a style. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they don't find their style. Mm -hmm. uh, they, want to be a filmmaker, it's a commitment uh, that you have to take. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like carving a stone. How so? It's like you know, the carving you're working on, the stone you're wearing, it's going to tell a story. And when you put it on somebody's shelf, somebody's living room, it's going to be there. It's going to speak for itself. You do a lot of stuff for education and keeping traditions alive, teaching people about their past. How does this film fit into that legacy? How, how is it part of what you do in your daily life? It blends it very well because uh, we come from oral history. Uh, the camera is exactly the perfect tool for this. Uh, it is. Because it can just capture? You just talk to, you just talk. You just act, you just... Because that's what we learned when we were children. We're watching our father tie up the sled, how he ties it, how he harnessed the dogs, and we're trying it out ourselves. Um, yeah, I grew up to that world, so hmm. I, I want that, so preserve. Um, what do you do on your day off? Day off? What day off? <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't have a day off. I've been working with him. We don't really have day off. We don't have vacation. And this winter, um, we're trying to film walrus hunting in the winter time. And we never shot this. Nobody, I mean, never shot this. And we're trying. We almost drowned my skidoo. Yeah. You know, I just started sinking, but he, he was driving, and I'm on the sled being pulled because I'm with all the camera equipment. And this kid who started thinking, carving, carving through the ice. Yeah. Wow. And wow. I'm going through that. And then he speed up his throttle and got up. So this would be the first time people would have put walrus hunting on film. Did you get a walrus? No. 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 <laughs> so what do you want people in the South to know about your film? You, you talk about, you know, getting circumpolar culture out to the world. What do you want people to know that they don't know about your culture? I think the best part is to to carry our style of clothing and our dialect that mm -hmm. we carry on to to this film. That was very important to me to to to, to preserve that. Yeah. Preserve that as at the top, at the fast runner. Yeah. Well, we're part we're part of this world. We're part of Canada. Uh, that's all. And it's a big country, and just up there, that's what we, we do up there. Yeah. Well, we're so glad that you were here to talk about it with us today. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>